Good morning, friends. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to my kitchen, or welcome if you are new. I am Denise, and I'm going to be doing some things in the kitchen today to get ready for the work week. I need to make a pan of my granola bars, and since I'm getting so many new subscribers and viewers, I thought I would show them again. I need two cups of quick rolling oats. This is a half a cup measuring device here. So there's two cups. And I need one cup of a crispy rice cereal. sprinkle on here a half a teaspoon of cinnamon set that aside and now I need three quarters of a cup of peanut butter I like to use creamy but you could probably use chunky if you wanted to There's three quarters of a cup of peanut butter. Now I need a half a cup of honey. All right, there's our half a cup of honey. Now this is going to go in the microwave for 20 seconds. I'm going to take it out and stir it and put it in for another 20 seconds. Take it out and stir it and by that time it's usually done. You just need everything melted enough to easily stir. There it is, ready to go. Nice and creamy and runny. Now I'm gonna stir in one teaspoon of vanilla. Now I'm going to pour this over the oatmeal and crispy rice. And stir this up really well. Get everything coated. Now I'm going to sprinkle in some mini chocolate chips, just use up the rest of those, and I'm going to put in a small handful of coconut flakes, maybe a quarter cup. another stir. I have been making these granola bars for two, three years now. I absolutely love them. I have not bought a box of granola bars since I found this recipe. Highly recommend it. I will have it linked for you below in the description box. 
Now I have a about an eight by 11 pan lined with parchment paper. Pour this in. Spread them out as evenly as I can. Make sure you get them in the corners good. And this is where I wet down my fingers a little bit so I can feel how even it's getting. When you wet your fingers, it won't stick. I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for a couple hours so they firm up and then I'll bring you back when I cut them into bars. But I'll be doing more things in the meantime. Okay friends, now I'm going to get some bacon going in the oven. I have my oven preheating to 400 degrees and we're having BLTs this week. I have it on the menu for Wednesday, but my lettuce needs to be used sooner rather than later. So we're going to have the BLTs on Monday instead and just swap those two days around. So I want this cooked up ahead of time because I do not want to stand here and cook bacon after a 10 hour shift. So I'm going to get this cooked up and put in the refrigerator so then all I have to do is stick it in the microwave and get it hot. And I would much rather do my bacon in the oven. It's just easier. Cleanup is a breeze. one package all done in one shot. So when the oven's preheated, this is going to go in for about 20 minutes. I'll flip it halfway through. I'll see you in a bit. Okay friends, I'm going to take the bacon out of the oven because it's looking decent. It was in for 17 minutes because I will be putting this in the microwave Monday when we have our ELTs. Oh, this is, smells so good. And cleanup will be a breeze. I had somebody ask in the comments if the bacon grease splatters all over the oven. No, it does not. You don't get splatter when you do it in the oven. All right, I'll bring you back for the next thing I do. Okay, friends, now I'm going to get me a cold pasta salad going for lunches this week at work. So I'm boiling a pot of water to cook this tri-colored rotini. You can do about two cups. And I like fresh onion in salads. So I'm going to dice this up. I'm going to do the whole onion and then what I don't use I'll store in this glass jar in the 
the refrigerator so it's ready to go during the week if I need onion. Which I probably will because we like onion. I'm just going to chop all this up. I like running it under cold cold water because it helps stop the tears, I have noticed. All right, dice this up real quick. My water's boiling, so now I'll put the pasta in it. Set the timer for nine minutes, and then I'll see where I'm at. Give that a quick stir. Okay, I'll see how much onion this pasta salad will take. Now I have onion in the fridge, all chopped, ready to go. I do keep it in the freezer too, so if this don't get used up before it's going bad, I'll put them in the freezer, in the freezer bag. like cheddar cheese on my or in my pasta salad so since I'm gonna have the cheese shredder out I'm gonna shred the whole block get that all shredded up so I don't have to worry about doing that again Any little thing you can do in the kitchen to save yourself time during the busy week always comes in handy. Now put this in a bowl. block cheese shredded. I'm going to quarter up some pepperoni slices for in the salad.
Okay, my pasta is nice and tender, so now I'm going to drain it and rinse it under cold water. Okay, I'm just going to mix it up here in this pan before I transfer it to the storage container. Add my pepperoni. And some onion. And some cheddar cheese. And now I'm going to add some sweet and tangy French style dressing. and zesty Italian. Give this a good stir. Typically I like to put green pepper in here too, but I don't have any. I do, but it's in the freezer and I don't, I don't like using frozen in a salad like this. All right. That in this container. And now I have two to three lunches ready for the upcoming work week. There's that. Shredded cheese. I got it onion diced up, and that's already in the fridge. Okay, friends, I didn't film it, but I made pancakes. They have cooled completely. So now I'm going to separate them with parchment paper and they're going to go down in the freezer. So then if I want a pancake or two before heading out for work, just pop them in the microwave. Separating them with parchment paper will keep them from sticking together. Okay, now I got pancakes for several weeks. The next thing I'm going to do is make some applesauce donuts. Okay, now I'm gonna start on the applesauce donuts. I need to preheat my oven to 400 degrees. And I'm going to put a couple drops of canola oil into each one of these and then spread it around. I don't like using spray if I don't have to. The recipe says it makes 12, but last time I made donuts, it made 24. So I'm going to get Two pans ready just in case. And I'm just going to smear this around. All right. The recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. But I don't keep buttermilk in the house generally, so I'm just going to do about a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then fill it up with milk to the three-quarter mark. 
and let it sit here while I get the rest of the stuff ready. Okay. I need two cups of flour. This is just all purpose flour. Now I'm going to need the half cup, a quarter cup, teaspoons. Okay. I'm old school. I still scoop out my flour and I level it off with the straight edge. And a little bit of advice if you're doing a day of many projects like this, you want to stay caught up on your dishes. So every time you have a little bit of downtime, you're going to want to do them dishes up. Your future self will thank you. Now I need a half a cup of white sugar. And two teaspoons of baking powder. And one teaspoon of baking soda. And one teaspoon of cinnamon. And a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to whisk this together using a fork. I'm going to set this aside and get our wet ingredient into a large mixing bowl. I need a half a cup of applesauce. And a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And the buttermilk. And then the two tablespoons of vanilla. Okay. Now we're going to 
mix in the dry ingredients. Now I think I'm going to get a Ziploc bag. it up, cut the corner off, and fill up the donut, three quarters of the way full. Okay, these are going to bake for 10 to 12 minutes. So I'm going to set my timer for 10 and see how they're looking. And I think I'm going to fill them empty ones with water. So they get even baking. Set my timer for 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes to get these dishes done. Okay, friends, my donuts are done. They were in my oven for 10 minutes, and then I had them sitting out here for five minutes to cool down a little bit. I will see how well I greased up the pans. Oh, nice. These are coming out good. Okay. Perfect. Now the recipe calls for the sugar cinnamon coating and a glaze, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be putting a lot of these in the freezer. So, thank you for spending this time in the kitchen with me. If you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.